So if you're a player like me, you enjoy going out on your own solo adventure, taking on the world's challenges all on your own. Because you like the challenge, because you like the silence. <clears throat> but which class is best for solo play? Well, what I'm going to go ahead and do is rank each of the nine professions and mainly focusing on the core professions and ranking their capabilities as a solo casual class and just as a side note this is just my opinion you can play any of the classes with the right build and the right setup and do perfectly fine so don't fret too much i'm going to be ranking them in the order of the ones that i felt were a little bit more difficult to play solo versus the ones that were basically a cakewalk so here we go starting out with Probably the most challenging, we'll say, as far as solo play, is the Guardian. Now, the Guardian has a lot going for it. Not only a ton of boons, has a tons of healing, it offers a lot of burning, as well as powerful strike damage. It is kind of missing out on the initial defenses. Not necessarily having a whole lot of toughness, nor having a lot of vitality, the two main defensive stats, it makes it a little bit harder for players to stay afloat when taking on tougher mobs in open world. Now, this isn't to say that it isn't balanced a little bit by offering many different ways to get the boon Aegis, which blocks the next incoming attack, paired with a lot of the passive healings and the immense amount of condition cleansing that the Guardian can apply, it absolutely has its place. However, for the most part, without the assistance of party members or nearby allies, it tends to be a little bit more difficult for the Guardian to essentially be able to stay in a fight and sustain itself. Now, as a side note, I will also include that the Guardian does have some options with their elite specializations that make them a little bit easier. For example, the traps from the Dragon Hunter elite specializations could make some of the open world content a lot easier, or perhaps the mobility from the Willbender would prevent some downstates. But overall, the Guardian does have a lot of issues taking on tougher mobs in solo casual play. Next, moving on to the Revenant. Now, ironically, two out of the three heavy armor classes in the game are, in my opinion, the more tough to deal with in solo open world content. Now, depending on the build, of course, you can make this a lot easier. Given the energy management, the core Revenant can sometimes struggle as far as keeping itself up. Now, that can definitely be countered by utilizing the Salvation trait line, which offers a handful of healing abilities as well as some condition cleansing, which definitely helps out in its sustain, or perhaps running Retribution trait line, which offers some extra defenses However, given that the core Revenant spec has to not only manage its energy bar with its skills, with its utilities, it can sometimes feel missing something. Now, I will certainly say that this does get balanced out a lot better when you roll in, say, for example, the Herald or even the Vindicator. The Renegade can be on its own fairly strong. However, I find that the Herald or the Vindicator, especially in open world, just they can handle themselves a lot better. The core spec, however, runs into a handful of issues. Seventh on this list is actually going to be the Thief. Now, the Thief is, of course, the more slippery, stealthy assassin type in this game. However, it definitely does not have any type of defenses or we'll say extra vitality or toughness. Now, don't get me wrong, the thief can definitely pump out some serious damage and paired with the stealth attacks as well as the mobility, it's meant to be catch me if you can, not stay and fight in a one-on-one -on -one sense. Now, the other reason that I would rank the thief higher than the guardian and the revenant is that the thief's mobility can almost directly be related to the skill of the player and if the player can keep mobile and keep away from enemies and manage cooldowns appropriately the thief can have an easy time or an easier time in open world so for example a double pistol thief is very very safe and with a couple of shadow steps it's nigh uncatchable but of course the thief's major problem is just being caught if the thief doesn't have a defensive or to be able to get out of the way of harm it can almost feel like it gets one-shotted also given its low 
health pool, condition damage can do some serious work on it and cause a downstate pretty quickly. Now, looking at, for example, the Daredevil or even perhaps the Spectre, those two elite specializations definitely offer a lot more, we'll say, sustainable combat for solo play. Now, the Deadeye can also do this as well, kind of leaning more into that stealth evasion type thing and high burst damage. But when we talk about high level mobs, such as champion level mobs, it needs something that can not only sustain itself, but be able to take a hit. And in that case, I would actually even recommend maybe the Spectre as an option, just because because mainly of the shadow form, which is the elite specs new professional mechanic. Moving down to number six, I actually put the Mesmer here. Now the Mesmer is such a unique class in and of itself, and if played right, can absolutely handle itself in solo play. However, the main focus of how well a uh, Mesmer does in open world depends purely on how it manages its clones. Now, the clones offer a slight distraction for enemies to attack and allow an opening for you to deal damage. However, these clones are fairly fragile, so they can take a couple of hits and then disappear. The only downside of that is that those clones are, in fact, the ammo system for their shatters, which is the profession mechanic. So it ends up being a little bit difficult in that sense for the Mesmer to be able to stay afloat while also shattering its clones, then those clones essentially just disappearing. Or if those clones get killed, they lose out on a lot of damage through their shatter skills and perhaps could fall behind fairly quickly. Now, of course, if they ran more of like the inspiration tray line, they could definitely offer a lot more survivability and of course sustain. Now I will say if you can manage the clones appropriately, this is without a doubt one of the, the most fun uh, professions in the game. Honestly, it's one of my favorites. Now, if you get something, for example, say like the Chronomancer or perhaps even the Mirage, you can, of course, front load a lot of damage or offer a ton of different conditions all the while you were dodging and evading, which is pretty unique. The Virtuoso, however, essentially removes that clone and allows you to become a ranged turret. But this also does mean that you have no distraction, so you need to be, we'll say, on your toes. Next on this list, I would go ahead and put the Elementalist, actually. The Elementalist, while it can be very, very strong in a number of different senses, offering high condition damage, plenty of crowd control, many defenses, it is a lot of work. And essentially, the longer that you play, and especially against, say, for example, champion level mobs, even with the right level build and gear, everything that you could have set up, if you don't play it properly, essentially, you just get blasted. And yes, if you play it improperly and you're not necessarily using water attunement, you're not using your heal skills, you're not using all of your other weapon skills in the correct order, or at least in a timely manner, it can essentially make it a lot more difficult. Now, having said that, some of the elite specializations say for example the catalyst can offer a lot of extra defenses and a lot of all-around stats for if you ran more of a celestial build for the catalyst then you absolutely could do very very well or even in the elementalist in general the elementalist also could in its own defense put up the elemental, so Glyph of Minor Elementals, and then the Elite Skill Glyph of Elementals, to offer a distraction uh, against enemies while they're attacking your elementals, you're able to sit there and attack them. So it offers a lot of versatility in that sense, and of course, dancing between all the attunements. It's one of those things that you need to play it appropriately, and if you do play it appropriately, you can handle quite everything that this game has to throw at you. But again, we're looking at like the solo casual play, so maybe not always the best suit. Number four on this list, I actually put the Engineer. The Engineer has a lot going for it, and a lot of ways to handle and mitigate damage. And then of course with that, they can summon turrets, bombs, and explosions, so that's pretty, pretty cool. The main defenses of the engineer is one, they have a decently high vitality pool, meaning that they have a decent amount of HP. Paired with that, and their ability to summon turrets, their ability to use tool belt skills and super speed and crowd control on top of brand new weapon sets with their weapon kits, they have a lot at their disposal to handle just about anything in open world. Now what's really unique about the engineer is that they are capable essentially for the most part to keep everything at range. Now if you have Secrets of the Obscure or the other weapon elite skills, you'll be able to use say for example a hammer or a mace or a sword 
However, just a good old fashioned rifle or a pistol and a shield, depending on how defensive you want to be, and you're good to go. The engineer has a lot of good defenses and a lot of good ways to mitigate some of the incoming damage, either with passive healing or blocking or automatic defenses that trigger when your health hits a certain range. All in all, I would say that they do a very, very good job as far as keeping their open world HP up. It can be a little bit taxing, but as far as casual play, dropping a couple of turrets and throwing some grenades, for the most part, they do pretty well. And then even if you look at, say, for example, their elite specialization, the mechanist, where you summon a mech to help fight with you in combat, that essentially makes it near Nearly easiest in the game let's be serious that mech is super overpowered <laughs> moving on to number three number three here I would put the warrior now the warrior of course has to be up front in melee and dealing tons of damage that way however the warrior also offers some higher base toughness and vitality but then even given with that they have a lot of different ways that they can just passively gain HP while they are dealing damage Specifically, I bring up the Might Makes Right trait, which every time that the warrior gains might, it heals them. And there is a ton of ways for a warrior to gain might while in combat. Not only paired with that specific trait, they have skills that allow them to one, take zero damage for a few seconds. They can utilize their heal skill defiance stance, heals them for all incoming damage. So you could get a full heal just off of this one healing skill. And on top of that, the warrior also brings quite a bit of damage mitigation either with their shield being able to block or an excessive amount of crowd control or honestly just their overwhelming damage now i actually made a build guide for the warrior and it's specifically one that it still stands true it is it is just that it's unkillable it, it takes so much to bring this warrior to build down and i've heard that there's a better variation utilizing the spellbreaker which i haven't actually looked into but it's something that i'm curious of speaking of the spellbreaker or even in this sense the blade sworn they also offer quite a bit of ways to not only add defense but immense attacks now that also can be split a handful of ways depending on the trade lines and the skills that you utilize but offering some blocks or some barriers definitely help out in in solo open world now the berserker is a specific case i will say that the berserker can be pretty decent in open world however the berserker tends to be a little bit more offensively oriented number two in this ranking is without a doubt the ranger honestly the ranger just brings in so much not only survivability but we're talking stun breaks we're talking damage we're talking a pet tank that can basically distract all of your enemies while you just pepper them with your bows and your attacks. Essentially, the ranger can personify everything that you would need to solo in the open world. And I'll be honest with you, it actually comes very, very close to the number one choice for this ranking just because it, well, it can do quite a bit. Not only can it augment its attacks, it can offer different ways for the ranger and its pet to heal. It can offer traps, glyphs, all sorts of versatile skills that can help keep the ranger alive as well as keep the pet alive. Not to mention that the ranger also does have quite high base vitality, meaning that the extra HP, once you actually get to the ranger, the ranger can take quite a few hits and still be good to go. And this can be further personified with the untamed, the soul beast, or even the druid, all three of which can offer not only different ways to sustain either through passive healing or barriers but also offer immense damage and we'll say new ways to utilize your pet and lastly the number one best solo casual class to play in guild wars 2 is the necromant and i really don't think that this comes as much of a surprise not only does the necromancer have the capability of controlling enemies so fearing them slowing them other various forms of crowd control they can summon minions and these minions essentially serve as a constant tank for the necromancer so you can just wail away on enemies and you don't have to really worry about much defenses and then even further paired with that the profession mechanic in the death shroud essentially gives the necromancer a whole other health pool for them to not only deal damage but also allows them to mitigate a lot of incoming damage without really much issue or stress so essentially the necromancer can 
handle most, if not all, open world content. We're talking bosses, we're talking champions, we're talking meta events, what have you. The Necromancer is just is just always a very, very strong choice, just given how much defenses it actually has. And given that the Necromancer tends to lean more towards like condition builds where it can wilt away enemies over time, having your pets to be able to distract while you load the enemy up with conditions is one of the most satisfying things. <laughs> now, I will also make mention that the Reaper can also do incredibly well in open world, given that one of its traits offers a bit of life steal for or enemies that are within range and especially with the reaper shroud just ripping everything to shreds it's actually very very easy to handle anything in open world with that the scourge is another option as well it does offer a ton of barriers however at the cost of losing your death shroud but overall it has the same amount of control if not more than the core necromancer and offers a mess of ways to deal condition damage over time and lastly, the Harbinger, I will say, is a little bit more offensively oriented and does not get the added benefit of Death Shroud, as well as draining its own HP as it is in combat. That one, I will say, is a little bit more difficult to manage in open world. And again, I will stress that these are all just my opinion based off of my play with these particular classes. And with the right build, any of these professions can certainly do well in open world and handle most content without issue. So don't let that dissuade you. I just thought that this was an interesting video to talk about. If you want to see the elite specializations that everyone plays, the most popular elite specializations, click this video here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks.